ja rakentajia, eli skans. Sen arvoihin kuuluvat tiettisyys ja avustus. Haluamme tietää, mitä Skanskassa ajatellaan stadionin työntekijöiden ongelmaa. Mutta Skanska tietää, heitä ei löydy yhteen maakuntaan, joka ei vastata kysymyksiin.
kyllä se porukka polttaa. Tämä näkee, mä, mä oon itsekin syyllinen ja mä oon näkee, että tänä, tänä kuulonena kesänä tulee se pieni tulille ja huolta, niin sitten se on kamat kellissä, niin siinä on lukee favorimia ja sitten vaan töitä, että on vähän nuhat, niin ei ole kaikkea käsitellä ja kauhean voimia, vaan tämä aivan järjestelmä. Tämä kannattaa laittaa alueen, se on hyvä. Ja siinä ei tarvitsekaan kyllä hyvä, se on semmoinen aika hyvä. Tietysti se, että tätä ei muuten se syy siellä, kun päättelee, että kannattaa ilmaa olla muuten kahti ja näitä alueella, että saadaan niin kuin täällä siitä hallinnon jollekin, että siellä on se nyt hyvä ja niin kuin jälkeen muuten, mutta itse suosittaa, että ei ole ihan täysillä, että täällä rupeaa niin kuin kohta tulee niin kuin tarvasta, niin kuin muuta matkana valmis. Tää on nyt tummaa, siellä ollaan, näytä näin päässä näyttää paremmalta. Jaa, se on vähän esikuttanut. Tää on ihan ryynäri ihan muutenkin tommonen tumma, niin voi laittaa tohon nyt sitten. Tää on ihan mielessä, kun ryynäri on ainakin muuta tämän alun suosittaa. Ei tämä ole kiinni, että vaan kiva, se on 
But what health advice would you really trust? We're here to weigh up the evidence and use our expertise to guide you through the contradictions and the confusions. We do research no one else has done and put your health at the heart of what we do. We listen to the questions you won't answer and ensure you get the information you need. We're here when you want to know the latest findings and not the latest facts. I'm Michael Mason. In this series, I'm joined by a team of doctors. Together, you'll cut through the hype, the headlines, and the health claims. This week, trust me, I'm the doctor. Hello and welcome to Trust Me, I'm a Doctor. This time we're going to be in Warsaw, where we're finding out you really do need to puff and puff for 30 minutes a day to get the full benefits of exercise. Also in the program, how to save your teeth from a hidden threat. Is going vegan good for you? A breakthrough in gene therapy that's saving lives. It was just under the head. This is just off. And a quick and easy way to get stronger without going to the gym. But first, as you know, it is incredibly important to remain active. Yet studies suggest that 40% of middle-aged adults do less than 10 minutes of continuous brisk walking a month. It's a long way from the recommended 150 minutes of moderate exercise a week. You should advise it's five sessions of 30 minutes each. So it's not surprising many of us feel we simply don't have the time. But now there's a... The idea is to send to the whole 30 minutes in one go. Do the same amount of exercise, but you break it into smaller chunks. It's known as exercise snacking. But can short bursts of moderate exercise really be as a longer session? Find out. We've recruited volunteers who usually do far less than the recommended level of exercise. Their inactivity could be putting some of them at risk of serious health problems. Hi, activity levels are almost zero. The last couple of times I came to speak with the doctor, I just tell me I'm going to go to the I'd like to be more active, so I'm trying to a bit more weight. Our volunteers are trying two different approaches. On one day, they do 30 minutes of brisk walking all in one go. On another day, they try exercise snacking, where they break down that 30 minutes into six bursts of five minutes, spread throughout the day. As a control, on the third day, they do no exercise at all for six hours. Running the experiment are Dr. Ian LaHart, an expert physiologist from the University of Wolverhampton, and Dr. James Brown, specialist in obesity and diabetes from Aston University. Throughout the experiment, they're testing our volunteer levels of blood sugar and blood fat. You say, what is the issue of blood sugar levels and blood fat? Sugar and fat is very important to the human body we use as fuel. But it's really important that we maintain the health of us. If our blood sugar starts to rise too much, we're at risk of developing diabetes. Similarly, if our blood fats become too high, we're at risk of increasing heart disease. Ian, yeah, what do things like do to blood sugar to blood fat? During exercise, the muscles take in blood sugar and fat is used as fuel. That can prevent a large increases in blood sugar and exposure to high blood sugar levels over time. It sounds unlikely, doesn't it? Five minutes of exercise, which seems like nothing, uh, could actually significantly reduce the sugar to fat. Well, we're going to find out. To test how our volunteers' bodies deal with sugar and fat, we're giving them a high-calorie meal on each of this day. We're measuring the levels of sugar in their blood every 30 minutes, and the levels of fat in their blood every two hours. Ian and James will then analyze the Four weeks later, our volunteers are back to find out whether exercising in six bursts of five minutes brings the same benefits as a solid half hour. Okay, James, so when you did your 30-minute continuous, we looked over the 
course of that day, I shall put sugar in your blood fats, and on average, they will arrive more than the same level. And on a day where you did no exercise at all, I will be more careful. Good. How does that compare to exercise snacking in a short five minute exercise? That was good news. We found very similar to the exercise snacks. So again, it was around 40% of the sugar and the fats. I mean, that's quite surprising, I have to say. On average, we found that doing exercise in short bursts is just as good as reducing levels of sugar and fat in the blood as doing a single 30 minute run. This is in line with the results of other larger studies. Which did you prefer? If you're worried, you can take five minutes. I'm really glad you said that because the reason we actually designed this study was to try and introduce the opportunity of choice to the kind of person who maybe hasn't got 30 minutes a day that does have five minute periods during a day that can still exercise and then We will be sitting around that for quite a long time, I think I thought. Yep. I was really encouraged by that. The people give not the exercise is lack of time, but we just showed that even if you do it in short chunks across the day, then you get this rapid and big improvement of things like your blood sugar levels and your blood fat levels. So the main thing is get out there and get moving. But there is evidence that over the past 10 years, many of us have not been getting enough of it. Too little iron can lead to tiredness, increased risk of infection, and even heart palpitations. Our bodies can't produce iron, so we have to get it in our diet. Whether through foods that naturally contain it, or those that have been fortified with iron, like white bread and bread dessert. The problem is that not all of that iron is in a form we can actually absorb. To find out which sources are best, I'm meeting with nutrition scientist Professor Paul Sharp from King's College London. What kinds of foods contain iron and more here? Things like red meat. Um, the iron in red meat is easily absorbable. There are good sources of iron in vegetables as well. So things like cabbage or spinach. But we don't absorb as much iron from those plant sources as we do from red meat. So can we boost our iron intake by, you know, considering foods that are actually fortified with iron? Okay, so they're certainly rich in iron, uh, but the iron isn't particularly absorbable. In fact, we can see what can happen when we eat foods fortified with iron. If we take a fortified cereal, grind it up, and add warm water. The iron fights? Yeah. If we ingest the iron in our whole, it would just pass straight through our body. Drink along with our food. To test what's best, we're mixing our fortified cornflakes with tea, coffee, orange juice, or milk. Cabbage oil, chips. Next, how best to eat our food and veg? Raw, oil, or tea? Now, in your favorite, how to put back oil. Ooh. And finally, can our choice of bread help? We'll compare white, bone meal, and sourdough. How much iron our bodies could actually absorb by simulating how our gut digests food. He grinds the dry samples, adds the right chemicals, and adds a few drops of the mixture to human cells. A few weeks later, I'm back for the results. First, what happened when we combine our cornflakes with different drinks? Taste? No. It really wasn't that much of a bad the orange juice, so about a 65% increase in the amount of iron that's absorbed. But the coffee, so it's about a 65% increase. I can't drink coffee with my breakfast. Well, that was bad. Coffee's full of polyphenols. They're very efficient at binding iron and making the iron less solid. 
Orange juice contains lots of vitamin C, and we know that vitamin C makes it much easier to absorb the iron. So if a fortified cereal is your breakfast of choice, try combining it with orange juice. That's your iron.